Hi guys, my name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about that thing that sparks the most debate across all of nerddom, in my opinion, alignment, and why I feel that GMs and players alike need to just lessen their chokehold on it just a little bit so we all can have a little bit more fun at our tables. Alignment can mean a lot of things to a lot of players. For some people, it's just that thing we write in the corner of our character sheet. Some people use it as roleplay guidelines. Some people have to be within, in certain systems, within a certain alignment box to play a class. A lot of people will see that last part and think that all of X class must be Y alignment or even all of Y alignment must be played this way. There is no other variation of it. That's just not the case. From my perspective, I think alignment, speaking as far as Pathfinder goes, we should take back on the reins a little bit and let the classes have a little bit more freedom as an official errata. Fifth edition's already done this and they've been doing it for a long time and they haven't changed it, so it must be working. Specifically, I'm talking about paladins, monks, even to a lesser extent druids, but druids get jammed in there too. Paladins in Pathfinder right now have to be lawful good. Don't understand why that is. I Sometimes I can appreciate it because you're playing the champion of justice and all this and you need to be occupying that square of the alignment chart, but in my opinion and from my experiences GMing for parties with non-paladins across the entire alignment spectrum, every alignment gets its champion. Why can't we have a champion of order in lawful neutral or a champion of freedom and chaotic good, etc, etc, etc. Some classes, I get the alignment is supposed to represent their training, like monks are supposed to, I imagine that's why they have to be lawful good, lawful neutral, lawful evil. Why else, why can't my monk be chaotic while well, he's trained for all this time? I'm not, well, that was when he was in like monk school, whatever, however your game or your backstory dictates your monk was trained. Why can't he change alignments? What does that break necessarily? For my opinion, it just creates more creative role playing. And though I understand that some classes use their alignment as a weapon, like the paladin smite evil, and if we let the anti paladin be chaotic neutral and he's just out for himself and no longer hits, that's fine. Shaking up the meta can change games that have gotten really stale, especially if you've got one or two players in your party who are building paladins and smiting the crap out of everybody with them. It's okay to change it up a little bit. So if you're the kind of player who likes playing holy warriors or monks or people that are supposed to be scions of nature, that kind of thing, but you don't want to necessarily stick to the alignment box that you're, the book if you're playing Pathfinder or third edition or any other system that says you must be X alignment, don't be afraid to talk to your GM and say, hey, can I play this but have it be chaotic good instead of lawful good and if you're the GM don't be afraid to let that fly it doesn't really break anything it's not gonna make a certain class like overpowered they're gonna have fun with it you're gonna get different avenues of adventure they're gonna get different avenues of RP everybody wins for GM's you have uh, things like vampires dragons demons aberrations things like that that in older books would always say that their alignment is always chaotic evil. I've had a lot of players personally give me a lot of ire when they'll, in my games, they'll stumble upon like an order of holy warriors that are crusading into hell and they're led by a red dragon whose alignment is lawful good. They'll freak out about it because this is supposed to be a chaotic evil monster that they think is there for them to kill. If you're that kind of player, relax, it's okay your GM is just trying to tell a different kind of story. He's trying to take something that is stereotypically used as an evil creature or an encounter and turn it into a friend. You see this a lot across pop culture, across books, movies, like I hate to go there, but Twilight, full of vampires, not all of them are evil. Whether you like Twilight is up to you, but the point stands. Those are non-evil vampires and they're functioning just fine in their world. So that's all I have to say about that. If you have anything else to add, throw it in the comments, like and subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next time.